assembly language tutorials part 4 part 4 has been split into three sub modules so three separate slides and uh, three videos uh, I figured out that uh, the part 4 is getting quite extensive so it's quite a good approach to split it into multiple parts so you'll find all the source code as well as the video here as well and uh, even though the videos are in YouTube definitely and uh, I'm keeping the same folder structure for my videos as well as well as the demo so you will find everything here over this link and uh, this link you will find it in the description section as well so uh, part 4 we have uh, three uh, sub modules so we'll start off with the first one data transfers in assembly now data transfer happens in one of these ways you have a mnemonic which doesn't do anything so it's possible that there is a single uh, mnemonic and there is no source and destination but it would still be updating some registers somewhere in another case you could have a single destination to process something from some pre-existing registers and store it here the same way you could have explicit source destination and multiple source as well we'll see how these work in the, the next few slides it would make more sense so here is a typical move instruction that is uh, in all the assembly code you would find this like all over the places now move is quite a flexible one like you can load values from register to register from memory to register from register from memory from register to memory this is the uh, towards the right we have source and towards the left we have destination right okay so you could load from memory to register as well and here by value we mean some intermediate value like any value that is also possible you wouldn't find like loading from memory to memory it doesn't work that way you always has to go through from the memory you have to read because you have to pass the uh, the address in the address bus and then the control signal in the control bus and the memory device would return back you the data in the data bus so there is no concept of from memory to memory now what happens is sometime we tend to copy a smaller source into a large destination so the data could, could get cranky in those cases so we have something called move zx and move sx so they will take care of uh, when we are copying something from small destination to large destination and by the way the assembler would throw an error if that's happening but still if you want to do for some reasons so these are the instructions move zx and move sx we wouldn't come across these lot but uh, good to know that now there is some weird <laughs> instructions as well lah so this means that AH register which is uh, kind of a uh, the EAX register basically has components like these are kind of the 8-bit components so EAX register is 32-bit so it is split into 16 plus 16 so the lower 16 is called CX and the CX is split further into AH and AL so we are storing the flags so if it is 8-bit uh, so we are storing the lower 8-bit so as you can see we have kind of a short description over here so we have load low byte right of e flags of uh, or r flags by the way r flags is 64-bit flags register but its lower 32 bits are used so basically we get down to this so inside this 32-bit register we store the low byte into AH register right load 
flags the low 8 byte low uh, low byte low 8 bits into AH register and this is the reverse store whatever it is inside AH register into the lower byte of flags register so why bother why why do we need, need this so the thing is the flags register they keep changing with each instruction so suppose we want to know that something has happened in instruction 1 and something in instruction 2 if both of these instruction have certain things that we want to look for if both of them has happened only then execute instruction 3 so those information every time a, an instruction is executed so e flags changes so we store that suppose into num1 and instruction 2 is executed we store what happened with that in num2 suppose we could compare them and finally we execute instruction 3 so it's kind of a conditional execution of instruction exchange register like in other programming languages you would have heard of like swapping two numbers it's pretty easy in assembly so like I will have to update these so I don't know these are some of the mistakes so it should be XCHG so let's run the demo and fix it ourselves right away So here we have. Let's uh, let's show you the demo as well. So let's go back a few more slides. So let's start here. So as you can see over here, like we have our example, like num1 is being loaded into EAX. Now EAX is 32 bit, and num1 over here is a byte. It's like half of it. So how do we do that? How we should not we shouldn't be able to assemble that, right? But we are able to assemble it. So how is that even possible? because of these instruction move zx and move sx and by the way num2 is signed bit so it is negative so I put a breakpoint over there the symbols are loaded and look closely I have a watch variable here by the way how do you get these window it's very simple you go to debug window and here you have registers towards down here and watch and you can add it drag it over there so you see that where 1 and where 2 is exactly like we have written over here look closely as I step through the instruction so this is like loading into that so we are loading num1 and num2 into EAX and EBX so we'll get to the swapping thing in a bit I guess I'm mixing these uh, slides quite a bit so but we'll get through that let's see the demo so now EAX has some gibberish value let's see what happens after that so as you can see that num1 gets loaded into EAX right so what what's num1 num1 is a byte which is 8 right so it's loaded here even though it's smaller than 32 bit but still it gets loaded let's see the next instruction now num2 is loaded into ebx which is minus 8 so this is what you get like it is uh, the negative number so it's taking lower byte and if you convert it into binary it's actually minus 8 so that's what's happening so now let's get to our exchange part start debugging XOR EX EX it, we are clearing every all the values inside EX when you XOR it something with itself so basically XOR works is like if you have dissimilar bits so it becomes one so now if you XOR something with itself so there wouldn't be any dissimilarity so it would be nulled out so that's we are just clearing this register step through it now AH value now 
we have executed this instruction now AH should have var1 var1 is 4 it is loaded AH means the high byte of uh, CX register so it's that now here we are doing the exchange now we have to keep a watch on this as well because var1 and var2 has 4 and 5 exactly like this so now here it's going to exchange now what's inside AH is going to be loaded into var2 so we will see a change over here first let's see I guess I clicked somewhere so I'll run that again what the hell is this so remove that run that again I fat fingered that so var1 and var2 4 and 5 step through it step through it exchange will be executed now step through so var2 gets 4 and now move all the stuff that is inside AH into var1 so we get like 5 so the swapping has happened cool so that's what it is so let's get back to our slides so I will make a correction here this should be X C X C H G. This is a quick one. It accepts all the stuff that is accepted by move. So C H G. That's why I wanted to mention that all the stuff that is supported by move, it is supported by X C H G as well, exchange as well. So, but uh, look closely. This doesn't work. Memory to value and value to re register. So it, it doesn't work only these three are working so you should be careful while using ex exchange instruction effective addressing now in previous videos we had discussed that uh, we could declare an array array is nothing but a contiguous memory location so how do we access that so if we have an array like that so if we increment it with one so here one means it's a d word so it will be one more so you could get 20 and then in a similar approach you could get it this way as well so I guess uh, it's quite a bit of assembly and you will find the demos over here I'm going to split this into multiple parts so I catch you guys in the next video.